As a child growing up in the 90s, I became a huge fan of sci-fi and space exploration, thanks to watching the likes of Star Wars, Stargate and Star Trek. I hoped that in my lifetime, man would eventually set foot on a different world. Unfortunately, as of the making of this video, this has not happened, and even for a short period of time, it actually felt like space development had almost stagnated with the retiring of the space shuttle in 2011. But luckily, all that is about to change as a new space race between billionaires, private industry, and rising international superpowers has finally begun. The year is 1944 and Nazi Germany is being pushed back by the Allies and Soviet Union on all fronts. It is the beginning of the end for the Third Reich, but out of desperation and anger, Hitler orders the launch of his new vengeance weapon, the V2 rocket, to strike targets in the United Kingdom. The V2 is the world's first long-range guided ballistic missile and is the brainchild of German rocket scientist Werner von Braun. Von Braun's pre-war rocket work was used as the foundation for the development of the V2 weapon system and, at the conclusion of the war, the United States, Britain and the Soviet Union each rushed to capture control of the advanced German rocket technology. Von Braun and about 1,000 other German scientists and rocket engineers were transported to the United States under the clandestine Operation Paperclip to continue their research in secret. Despite the effort by the US, the Soviet Union gained the upper hand in rocketry when in September 1957 they launched the world's first intercontinental ballistic missile, quickly followed in October 1957 by the launch of Sputnik 1. It's a report from man's farthest frontier, the radio signal transmitted by the Soviet Sputnik, the first man-made satellite as it passed over New York earlier today. These two events caused a great deal of alarm in Washington with the feeling that national security was now directly under threat from the Soviets. Space, a new front in the Cold War, had officially opened, resulting in President Eisenhower establishing the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, in 1958. The space race had now begun. The space race was a competition between the United States and the Soviet Union to achieve spaceflight dominance. It was, in essence, an extension of the wider geopolitical tensions between the two new superpowers, who were also in a struggle to gain not only military supremacy over one another, but also ideological and technological supremacy too. The Soviets further accelerated the space race when they followed up the successful launch of their Sputnik satellite by then putting the first dog into space. The race continued with the US launching the first weather and spy satellites before finally putting a primate into space. Not to be outdone, the Soviets then put the first man, Yuri Gagarin, into space in 1961, only furthering their big initial lead. It was now becoming apparent that the US was still playing catch up with the Soviets and needed to do something drastic. President Kennedy, for reasons of national security and prestige, now set a new goal for the United States. Time for this nation to take a clearly leading role in space achievement, which in many ways may hold the key to our future on Earth. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. This monumental endeavor was going to be extremely complex and also extremely expensive. As such, the expertise of Werner von Braun and his team were immediately sought out. I think the real significant thing about the Apollo program, our lunar landing program, is that it uh, serves as a focusing point for a vast uh, scientific and technological effort that could never uh, have been mounted and uh, conducted with this kind of uh, determination had it not been for a firm target in, in space and time. Von Braun, who was now head of NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, was overseeing the construction of the Saturn series of rockets, including the enormous Saturn V, which would eventually be selected as the super heavy launch vehicle that would take astronauts to the moon as part of NASA's Apollo program. And on July 16th, 1969, it did exactly that with the launch of Apollo 11.
We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Just days later, on July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong became the first man to step foot on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The moon landing was an iconic world event and one of the greatest achievements of mankind, requiring ingenuity, technical expertise and funding on a scale not seen since the Manhattan Project. It accomplished Kennedy's stated goal to put a man on the moon by the end of the decade and helped the United States to leapfrog the Soviet Union by dwarfing any of the Soviet's previous achievements in the space race. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for part 2. Also, if you found this topic as intriguing as I did, don't forget to drop a like and remember to subscribe for more intriguing content like this in the future.